and welcome to Battlefield 4 News episode 64 and today we've had numerous patches across the older consoles and PC. This has brought in the netcode update for the PC but not the older generation consoles although it will be coming to the newer generation consoles. So these are the patch notes for the PC update on the 3rd of June and these are very similar to what I told you was going to be coming from CTE to the live game in the last video. So if you want a fuller description of these then go back and take a look at the last video but here's a quick rundown of what we've got. We've got reduced camera shake from explosions. We've got character models not clipping through each other anymore. We've got a reduction in the mismatch of damage between client and server. We've got a fix for explosives not blowing up when you shoot them. Improvements for client side packet loss. Client crash fixes. This is a new one, AMD Mantle Multi GPU Improvements, so it looks like I'm going to have to go back and test Mantle again to see how good it is now. There's a bug fix for the Carry Assault Game Mode reports. Now that's different from the bug fix for Carry Assault that's on the consoles, and I'll have a look at that later. This just seems to be for the reports page that you get when you finished a round. High Frequency Network Update. So this is the tech rate improvements with the high frequency bubble that surrounds you in a 30 hertz tick rate rather than a 10 hertz tick rate. Well, like I say, I've explained all this in the previous episode, so go back and look at that if you don't know what this is. And there's an option to turn that on or off or vary the rate. What isn't mentioned in this list, but was on the list they gave us on CTE as to what was coming in this patch, is the reduced frame history time. Now this may well be included in the improvements for client side packet loss, but on CTE it was specified separately. However, I can't imagine them bringing in the netcode fixes without reducing that frame history time because that's pretty vital to how the back end works when you've got a higher tick rate. So we'll just have to wait and see if it's there. But I think it's there, I just don't think it's listed. The other thing that's not on this list but was on the CTE list was the fix for third person player orientation mismatch. Now that's not exactly vital, it's basically meaning that when you switch between first person and third person they corresponded to what you actually saw but that's not there either. Other than those two items, this is pretty much what we expected for the live update from CTE. But on the PS3, you'll notice there's none of the tick rate improvements. What we do have is the reduced explosion camera shake. We've got some fixes for rental server bugs. The character collision improvements are here. The reduced damage mismatch is here. The explosion pack fix is here. Improvements for client side packet lots is that is there. Added controller option to swap functionality of the bumper and trigger buttons. So that means you can now reassign your triggers and bumpers, which you couldn't do before. And there's an invisible walls fix on the carrier. So the Prius 3 has got some of the CTE fixes and a few fixes related just to consoles but it hasn't got the tick rate improvements. Neither has the Xbox 360. This again has got improved explosion camera shake, rent a server bug fixes, the character collision improvements, object damage mismatch, explosive packs not exploding, improvements to client side packet loss, the option to swap the bumper and trigger buttons, it's got physics optimized for naval strike wave baker rocks. Don't know what that is. Invisible walls on the carrier fixed and a fix for issue where clients with low bandwidth would not be able to enter the squad menu. So again, we've got some of the CTE improvements, some console specific stuff, but none of the CTE tick rate improvements. 
Now the PS4 patch doesn't appear to be out yet and there are no update notes for it. But the same blog post that told us what is coming on the other consoles and on the PC tells us what's coming on the PS4. And as you can see the high frequency bubble is coming on the next gen consoles. So it would appear that it's only the older generation consoles which are not getting the high frequency bubble. The other changes here are pretty much the same as the PS3. So we've got all the bug fixes from CTE. We have the rental server bug fixes. We have the physics optimizations, the added controller options and the invisible wall fix. For the Xbox One we seem to have even more fixes coming. So we have all the CTE fixes including the high frequency bubble we have the same controller update, we have the physics optimizations, we have the invisible war fix, but then we have a whole bunch of other fixes. So fix an issue using standby in campaign, fix an issue using standby and reconnecting to game servers, fixed issue with snapped application and matchmaking, don't know what that is, playgroup matchmaking fix for Xbox One, Fixed incorrect error message for lost Xbox Live connection. Fixed issue for username mismatch in rental server, in-game scoreboard and squad join menus. So, Xbox One has got a ton of fixes on top of the CTE fixes that everything else has got, apart from the older generation consoles. Now the tick rate fixes aren't guaranteed to be on a server you're playing on. For the next gen consoles all the 48 man servers do have the tick rate fix and some of the 64 man servers have had it but it will be rolled out to all of them. On the PC it requires the server owner to then update their server and get the tick rate working. And I would guess over the next week pretty much every next gen console server and every PC server will be running this higher tick rate option. So why aren't we seeing these netcode improvements coming to the older generation of consoles? Well the answer is simple, they can't cope with it. That's why you're not running 64 man servers and you won't be able to run the 30 hertz tick rate because your hardware is too old. Bit brutal but that's it. Your console's too old to run the latest version of Battlefield 4, so you're going to have to stick with the 10Hz original version. So that's it for this episode of Battlefield 4 News. Now hopefully the PS4 and Xbox One updates will be out soon, but they will follow those patch notes because the older generation consoles and PCs have. So it's less than a week before we get the official announcements for Hardline from EA at the E3 conference and Dragon's Teeth is going to be following along pretty soon. I expect that we're going to have to wait until the CTE patches have been stabilised and found to be working properly but after that then Dragon's Teeth is going to start rolling out. So I'll bring you all the Hardline news we get from the E3 conference and any Battlefield 4 news that we get coming up. Thanks for watching.